Good afternoon. I'd like to uh, congratulate IFPRI for its 40th uh, birthday and to thank the Director General, the management and staff of IPRI for working so hard to show that we can not only learn from the knowledge event today, but also celebrate success stories that have been visible over the 40 years. In thinking about what I would say this afternoon, I was reminded of a joke about a person who turned 40 and said, actually, I'm only 18 with 22 years of experience. So my remarks this afternoon will be structured in that way. What would you do if you are 18 with 22 years of experience? Because we are looking back and looking forward. And the first thing that I wanted to, to mention is when we look at what's shifting in the world and the impact that it's going to have on food and nutrition and on the agricultural sector, it is unevenly distributed across the world. Particularly when you think about the regions and the zones of the world that will be receiving huge amounts of food demand and those that will be producing it, but also in terms of the preferences across those different spheres. So if you take the example of Africa, we are having at the same time a tremendous capability to use the largest available arable land that is not yet used for agriculture, but at the same time having challenges because the level of productivity of the existing use of, that, of the land is not high enough to give the yields that would be necessary to receive the results that would be needed to feed the growing population. At the same time within Africa, we have a huge inequality in terms of nutrition. And I'm reminded again of a young woman who was uh, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes coming from a poor family in Nairobi. And it turns out the reason is because she's very busy, doesn't have time to cook. So on the way home, she eats those samosas cooked in very unhealthy oil. And that is the nutrition that she gets, even though she could afford to eat better. And the diagnosis is a wake-up call to say, when you were in the village growing up, you ate fresh fruit and fresh vegetable, go back to that kind of diet. And this transformation between the level of education and the level of nutrition, which is now going in the opposite direction, is a twin challenge that countries need to face in order to go forward. So that's what the role of education is on the one hand, but also the role of communication and, and the role that the private sector can play in, in the work it does in advertising. The other uh, paradox comes to do with the distribution of people who are working in, in the sector. The average person in Africa working in agriculture is 65, and agriculture is more and more feminine. So for example, in Morocco, between 1995 and 2012, there's an eight-time increase in the number of women working in agriculture. That figure for Mauritius and Ireland is three times increase. So this is a phenomenon that's taking place across the board, and the question then is if agriculture is going to be done by grannies, and if agriculture is not going to mechanize, as it has not been in the case of Africa with a decline in mechanization, where is that kick going to come from? And I'll have some uh, suggestions in the second part of my talk. When you look at nutrition, a lot of the shifts that are taking place in nutrition today are, are being debated on the global scene in terms of cereals versus vegetables and fruit, choices between meat and fish, and so on. But when you look at it within the paradox, again, of the African uh, countries, you find that we used to have a tradition where the best, softest meat, whether it's liver or the soft breast meat of a chicken, goes to the oldest person in the family because they didn't have teeth, so they could chew on those nutritious parts. And that, that conversation has now shifted to say, give some of that nutrition to the younger generation so they can grow up healthier. But at the same time, because older people are living longer in Africa, life expectancy is growing, we do have a challenge because we have to now balance the two sides, the young people and the older people eating nutritious food. So how do these complexities come to play and what would be the potential solutions? The first one, and I will rely on the role of the private sector because this is the area that I'm working mostly with these days, is to look at competition and the role it can play. 
In the example of Senegal, despite not having increases in the productivity of growing rice, by introducing competition on the import side, where you have 20 companies now competing to bring rice into the country, it brought down the price of rice to the average consumer, and there the private sector delivered not only a reduction in cost, but also contributed to food security. Yields have not been increasing in other areas, but with the introduction of good ideas from science and using uh, varieties of seeds that can be uh, worked up very easily using the private sector again as a channel for new seeds, new technologies, and new ways of agriculture. And of course, there's a lot to be done on the food science side in order to preserve food uh, for longer periods of time. I have a few uh, seconds left, so I will close with what seem to be working models. Efficient outgrower models work, they've been proven, in the case of Nigeria with rice. Water efficient plants have been working, with the uh, example of Mars and cocoa in the Western Africa. And sophistication of agriculture is taking place with examples from leasing equipment in Ghana to using the private sector to market better the sweet potato. The foreign minister of, of Rwanda recently said, we knew potatoes, but now we know potatoes. And in her tweet, she had an example of a, of a sweet potato brand, which is now made into biscuits. Women can play a very important role, as we have seen in a number of countries. But we need to attract the young people to agriculture and their technology is very key. We've seen it again in the case of Rwanda where young people flock to agriculture because it's now exciting. And in closing, we can do much more on the infrastructure and finance side, particularly by supporting small and medium enterprises, those engaged in agribusiness and agro-processing, and by ensuring that the logistics supply chains work. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, IFPRI.